Well, I was wanting to make another video to show you guys, and I got distracted by this very awkward little ginger cat, so, uh, say hello to Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, you're a YouTube star now. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, this video is, uh, another one where I'd like to compare, uh, some settings that come with the out-of-the-box Fox body, uh, you know, small block Ford tune on the Terminator versus... Uh, factory Ford EFI from a Fox body uh, in terms of cranking. So during cranking, we, we talked about in the last video, we were focused kind of on the idle air side of that, but um, there's there's actually some cranking parameters in the Holly uh, in addition to just the idle air logic that really needs some attention potentially. Uh, and that's right here. This is your cranking timing and your crank to run RPM. So the cranking timing is just simply saying, what's your ignition timing while you're cranking the engine? And it'll be just locked at this timing until you get above a certain number of RPMs, which is defined as the crank to run RPM. Uh, and as soon as you get manage to get it to go above that, it starts to realize the car is actually running now, and then it switches into all of its other normal logic where it, you know, starts managing spark and idle air and fuel and everything else. But while you're cranking, uh, the crank timing and this this sort of transition RPM uh, can make a big impact on your ability to start the car now. You notice here it's set to cranking timing of 15 degrees before top dead center, and it's a 400 RPM set point where it makes the transition to run. Let me show you what Ford did in a factory uh, calibration. So the the what we'll call basically the equivalent of the crank to run RPM, Ford actually had that at 225 RPMs uh, from the factory. And while cranking, your timing was only at 10 degrees. So less timing and it needs much less of an RPM before it'll go into run mode. And so what I wanted to show you now is I've got two different data logs uh, from two different people I'm working with on the Holly side. And I wanted to show you the difference uh, based on some settings. So this first one here, uh, you notice this red line across the bottom, this is the RPMs, and you notice that this car is cranking for you know half a second, full second, second and a half, almost two full seconds of cranking and really struggling to get above, uh, you know, about 125 RPMs. Uh, and then eventually it just starts to catch, but it's still kind of stumbling through that. It's up to 300, it's up to 400. And then right here, then it kind of starts to, to pick itself back up and it eventually gets up to about 750. It's still kind of stumbling at that point uh, for other reasons. But you notice it took a lot of cranking, and then even once it started to kind of go up, it still took a while to catch and then do something. And so this, I think, is is more likely uh, to be a result of that crank to run RPM than it is the timing. Uh, but 400 RPMs to rely on your starter to just keep chugging and chugging and chugging, uh, and, and to get the car up to 400 RPMs. That's, that's a lot of ask for these, especially if you have like kind of an old factory style uh, starter from the Fox bodies, the big ones that were kind of the earlier Fox bodies uh, before they went to the high torque mini starters at, at the end of the Fox body era. Uh, those are just notorious for getting heat soaked, especially if you've got like long tube headers where the header's practically touching the starter and you know, you bring it up to full temp, you go do your runs or whatever, run into the gas station, kill it, try to turn it on again, and suddenly it's really, really hard to start. Well, you're not going to get it to 400 RPMs uh, if you're having kind of those uh, power-related issues as far as getting the starter to go. So it, it really probably will benefit you on a Fox body to continue along with, with kind of what Ford did and bring that setting down to around 225. Just as a rough starting point, nothing's perfect, but it might make a really big difference in getting it to catch and, and actually go ahead and pick up because ultimately, as soon as you cross that point, the engine, it's going to start throwing uh, more fuel at it, and it's going to throw more timing at it, and it's really going to perk things up and help it kind of climb the rest of the way out of that. And again, 400 RPMs is just a lot. And if you're like me, you know, a lot of guys got their battery in the trunk. Um, you know, even if you've got, you know, the best grounding you can come up with, you still get a heat soak starter. You've got, you know, a little bit more difficult path for, for the juice on that, um, having to travel all the way through the chassis and, and uh, make its way there. So... This is kind of the first thing that I'd recommend you maybe try if you're having trouble where it has to crank a long time and it, it kind of slow to catch. Now, now the other thing is the cranking timing, and you know Holly's documentation here just is a very blanket, generic statement. 
uh, suggest that 15 degrees is, is going to be good for most combos, as uh, they also mentioned for the 400 RPM point. Um, that, that's a pretty broad statement. And, you know, cranking, uh, timing, the, the biggest thing that makes it di uh, kind of difficult to start a car as it relates to timing is going to be the compression of the engine. Uh, so if you're running like a really, really high compression engine, it's already harder to turn that engine over anyways. Uh, and sometimes when you have the, the timing really, really high, uh, you, you know, you can have some issues there. So, you know, if, you, if you've got just kind of real simple, you know, kind of bolt-on Fox body deal, naturally aspirated, you know, not real high compression, or, or even more if you've got like stock pistons, stuff like that, um, you're probably good lowering that down to 10 degrees. But uh, at the end of the day, though, this is one that if, if you don't have a problem, there's nothing to fix. But uh, if you want to know what Ford did, they put it at 10 degrees. And um, it's just another one of those things you might try. And again, especially if you've got a higher compression engine, might be a little easier to turn over the car uh, with a little less timing. So just a couple quick things to look at on your cranking parameters. But uh, now you know what Ford did from the factory. Might give you some ideas on what you can do here so that you don't end up having to crank and crank and crank and have a really uh, kind of sluggish start to your, your car. So I uh, hope it helps, guys. Good luck. Godspeed.